Hello everybody, uh, welcome to our Friday live session support. Um, I'm Maxim. And I'm Nicholas, nice, nice to meet you too. Hello. And today we will uh, handle all your questions, uh, so don't hesitate to write them down on the chatter and uh, we will try to do our best to uh, give you a proper answer. Um, Maybe we can have a, a first check on all the, the app of, uh, of the, the V11 um, because there is some change, um, specifically the sales module. Uh, before V11, sales module was composed by sales and CRM. And now since uh, V11, um, CRM has been uh, split it from uh, the sales module. So you have a proper dedicated menu, uh, module for the CRM, and there you can uh, you can handle all your leads opportunities and yeah convert them into uh, real sales. As you can see, we we have removed the um, the banner over here with the overdue activities, the expected revenues, and we have changed it to incorporate the activities more properly in the system. On the top of the stages, you can see different colors: green, yellow, and red which are the activities that are planned for today, planned, sorry, two days activities or overdue ones. If you click, for example, on the overdues, it will highlight the opportunity, the lead, which has an activity that is overdue. Same for the planned activities and for the two days activities. As you can see, the activity is shown over here with a little clock in the color. If you click on it, you can see what is, ex what is expected to do. And you can also enter this new activity to, sh to see it here in yeah. the planned activities in the chatter. Can you, can you show us, Nicolas, how we schedule an activities on a specific opportunity or lead? Yeah, for example, you can take here in the stage proposition, the first activity, interest in, in your products. Click on the clock. You see no activities is planned for the moment. Click on schedule an activity. Oh, that's nice. Here in the activities, you have either the choice Send an email, make a call, plan a plan task. a meeting. Yeah, it's specific task. The two first one are pretty basic. Click on it, plan, schedule it in the chatter. I won't change anything. It stays in the chatter. Mm -hmm. A big change that we've done in the V11 is for the meetings. If you check the meetings, you see that the dates have been removed from the view. And by clicking on schedule an activity, we'll directly access to the calendar. Whereas you can choose, for example, to have the meeting on the 24th of January at 9 o'clock. And you can select time schedule. Here is a meeting for Ozu. Yeah. Create the meeting, and it shows up in the calendar of the user. Directly, but that's recorded in the calendar module. That's right. Okay. That's right. That's a good improvement. And now, if you go back on the, if you if you just we we, we can just show it over here. Yeah. You see that it's here in the calendar. Okay. And if I go back here and click on the activity. Oh, nice. I can also check here the document, which will leads directly to the appropriate opportunity from where you've done mm -hmm. the meeting. Maybe as as you have already noticed, um, if you just scroll a little bit up. You, you can see that the, the meeting, the smart button uh, meeting has been synchronized with the schedule activity. Um, so if you record a meeting, it will also count the number of meetings that you did or that you have planned uh, to do for this specific object, in this case, the, the opportunity. Um, so you can directly have a link to the, to the, to the meeting and the, the calendar. So that's a, that's a good uh, improvement too. Um, as, as well, you may have not noticed, but mm -hmm. before I planned the activity yeah. here, there were seven, 16 activities scheduled on, okay. the on the database. Yeah. Now it's 17. It's a big change we did in V11. It's incorporate the activities uh, in the notifications. Mm -hmm. One of the big improvement, <coughs> sorry, improvement to make the database more user-friendly. By clicking here, you'll see all the activities that are oh, yeah. present on the database. And right. we have a quick view on uh, those who, uh, the, the, the activities are, that are late or that you have to do today. Have you also a possibility to see the, 
next or the future one? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do have it. For example, you have here seven future activities. By clicking on here, it will only show up the activities that are, spl that are planned for the future. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and so here by clicking, I can see directly the activities planned and I can just press or check the activity to mark it as done. And of course, it will uh, update the status of the activity. Good. Yeah, I can see that the number of activities has decreased to 16. And the room lock is locking. No. no. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we've said before that now the CRM and the sales are separated. Mm -hmm. You know that you, know, you can notice here that the, the previous dashboard has disappeared. Now we directly arrive in the quotations view, yeah. which makes the sales application more more interesting for the sales. It's only about sales and not CRM leads and opportunities. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, other we, can, we can maybe discuss about the new reports. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, that's another uh, improvement in V11 uh, compared to V10. You can select yeah, a type of display. So Odoo offer four choices um, for the displays of your reports or so displays uh, for the delivery orders, the um, quotation, sell orders, invoice, bill. And you can you can have a, have a look at it on the settings module. Directly, if you go on your company, That's right. and that means also that you can have a specific display for a specific company. That's right. And there on my, uh, okay, I have to go through the general settings, I guess. Maybe we have unchecked the option. Yep. But okay. yeah, like we said, now you can choose four, one of the four reports that is that are included in the Odoo V11. But you, you have to know that when you choose one, it will be the one by default for all the reports that you have in the system. Yep. You can change it later, but this one will be applied for all, all the reports. Exactly. You cannot choose one specific It's not possible to choose one specific report for one specific um, uh, move or sale or purchase or anything like that. Mm -hmm. One display for all the documents. That's right. um, and to access it, you have to go through the general settings uh, in the settings module. There you have uh, the subsections, uh, which is business documents, and you can just click on the link here, change document template. There you access to all the four, the four templates that are available, and you can have a preview of the documents, uh, of the display applied on a specific document. In our case, it's the invoice. So that's the first. Um, display, you can have an eye on this one, for example. And once you have made your choice, you can just select the one that you wish to apply. And uh, yeah, just select it like this. Uh, the one chosen is in blue, so it's really easy to see. And don't forget to save as always. Yeah, sure. And save also the settings. So now, um, if I'm printing some documents, you can see, we will see that the, the display will be according to the um, template that, that we choose. So I still need it to wait it's a little bit. It's loading. After that, we can maybe discuss the sections on the report. Yeah, yeah. It would be interesting to show on the new report. Exactly. Good switch. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's it still loading okay so if I'm taking a sell order for example let's do a, a new order yep and create a new one take some um, a customer template we will choose default one which uh, has already some price list um, 
applied by default on the template. When you choose the template, those configuration uh, yeah are just set on the on the set order. Um, was you can choose product from PPKs. You have a blocking message, not blocking really, but message warning telling you that uh, you plan to sell one unit, but you have uh, a, a negative stock. So Redu uh, is warning you about that. But you are still uh, able to to make the, the delivery and the sales even if your stock is in negative. You just have to force uh, the delivery order. That's possibility. So now that we have uh, saved, we can print our, uh, in this case, quotation. And as you can see, this is the new template. Yeah, that's the template. that shows up. It's pretty nice. It changes from the previous ones. The previous one was quite basic. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of cases, features, yeah. Yeah, feature boxes. Now it's more separate. You can see information more accurately. First line, first line on the top here. You can see all the information regarding the sales date, salesperson, payment terms, and then another one, another box separates those information with the older lines. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's it's more appropriate to for businesses if you want to separate the information accordingly. And uh, just to show you, we can just change the um, template to show you the effect. So I can take this one, which is a little bit different, as you can see. It's so font. Uh, a little bit of Italian design. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's see if it has already been taken into account. Like usual, runbots are very used internally mm -hmm. for testing purposes, for new modules creation. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time we have to be patient and there as you can see the new design is here it's been applied on the application good um, yes we can maybe check all the sections on the documents yeah. um, see what are the purpose of the of the different sections and in which kind of business case we can use it for the for the person that haven't used the, the v11 yet or for the person that uses that still uses the um, the V10, you can see that we have improved the settings over here. All the settings can be defined and set from one view by just clicking on the application you're looking for it's very, very, very easily. Mm -hmm. More, it's, It makes the system more friendly. And yeah. we, we wanted to do that. We wanted to, to be the, the best system, the most user-friendly system that we can have on the market. And here on the sales, for example, we can go a little bit down. The options haven't changed. It's more, it gives you a, a little bit less information, but it's more precise. Mm -hmm. More here, accurate about yeah, the, uh, that's the right. option and the purpose of each option. You can see the sections on sales order for the ones who didn't know what it is. So I we will show it right away. Save this. And we will go back on the page to choose the order line sections. So it is, it is a little bit different. For example, you can use on the products categories, mm -hmm. which gives you possibility to have a costing method, inventory evaluation. Here, the ID, the ID is more to separate a sales order between sections. It could be, for example, services, or eventually products, vehicles, whatever you want to sell. To sell, sorry. And here, it's just to separate without without uh, interact with the categories. Yeah. So you mean that you can define on the display some sections? That's by right. By kind of type of, uh, of, uh, of goods? And e stuff exactly. Like that. that could be an idea. For example, let's click on all the line sections. You see that here, for example, is service material. You can add a page break. Mm -hmm. We'll add a new one, which is, I don't know, um, vehicle. Let's say we had a page break, and let's the last sequence, 100. Oh, you can also order the, the sections to put the 
maybe the um, services in the first uh, first right. part of your of your document, and then the motor on and then vehicle. Oh, good. We'll, we will do the test. For example, here we have the mm -hmm. first one is services, and the last one is vehicle. Okay. We will do now. I will duplicate the page, and we will do a test first with those sections. And then we'll change the sequence to show you how it works. Yeah. By going back in the here in the orders, let's create a new one. I will take, for example, camp to camp. I won't take any quotation template, but I will take expiration date of the sale. And I want to do an air flight. Let's take five quantities. Mm -hmm. And we apply a tax of 15%. Save and close. And you see that here you have a new column called section. I go back on the line, and here I can choose the section whereas the, the, I want to, the product to be shown. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say it's a vehicle. It's not accurate, we agree, but it's to show you how it works. <laughs> it shows up here. Let's add a couple of other products. To the vehicle sections? or. Maybe maybe not another one so to, okay. show, to show you that it doesn't depend on the other line uh, ID, but really on the section of it for the document. Let's say the computer case is a material. Okay. Also, fifteen percent tax. Let's take again a vehicle, mm. motor, cycle. I'll create it for unit price of fifteen hundred. Big motorcycle, and say it's a vehicle again. I save and close. And as you can see, the sections are quite different here. Obviously, we can sort by sections yeah. to be shown here, but that's not the purpose. Save it and print the document. So now we should be able to see the yeah material and then vehicle section. Oh, good. Yeah. As you can, if you remember well, you see that the vehicle, the vehicle comes first. Uh, mm -hmm. the, sorry, the material comes first, and the vehicle. Our, sec uh, our third uh, on the sequence order, yeah. and on the document is the same ID. By yeah. by truth, oh sorry, but mm -hmm. here by ID, by adding the the page break, you see that we have here the subtotal and then the all total of all the sale okay. for, for the document. Let's maybe now try to change the sequence and say this one will be the first. Can you add a, a, a page break on motor? Yeah, just to see the effect. Uh. First and first, here we will see, it will be sort, I think, alphabetically. Maybe. Let's change the service and put it in 999. I don't know, maybe, maybe I have to refresh the page. I'm not sure about it. No, no, it's working. So as you see, you have your material. Just check the... Edition document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you scroll down. Oh yeah, sorry, a, 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 sorry, a, a, a page break here. Yeah, that's right. Because we've done a page break, yeah. a, a new page shows up for the other category. I mean, the the other section. So that's another way to customize your your reports. You you have uh, the um, possibility to add some sections, page break. Um, yeah, instead of the. Maybe some uh, categories on project you can just configure that for a specific sale or uh, maybe for kind of packaging. Um, it makes me think about a case, a business case where uh, some client wants to to sell some package. Uh, let's say, for example, they want to sell some um, sport uh, sport package, and in re each package they can have like. Um, a milkshake, uh, yeah, cereal bar, um, rice, stuff like this. Um, but they they can have different options, as they don't want to to make the, to use the variants because variants is not um, correctly uh, doesn't answer properly to to this issue, um, and they just want to apply the the package on the invoice itself. You can use the sections, for example. Um, That's right. You can have, as Nicolas, um, yeah, configured. We can, for example, take the um, the sections. Uh, I think we have to go from settings. No. No. Um, I think no. It's in, um, in debug. Ah, okay. We have to be in debug mode. I think so. 
So we have to be in developer mode to, to access to the sections. Uh, or no, maybe a little report little categories. Yeah, that's this one. Okay, so we can, for example, think about um, yeah, material, let's call it package, sport package one for option one, obviously, and then we can change the vehicle and sport package two. Um, and then you can just set your sections, put some product under the, the section Sport Package 1, other products are same uh, under the, the section Package 2, and you will structure your, your report by a uh, kind of package, so your client has a direct, direct views on, on the different package uh, that he bought, and uh, that's another way to not use kits or uh, manufacturing model with the bomb or the variant on, on product. Uh, if you don't need to go too far in those different options, um, maybe a simple way to, to simulate the, the package is to use the sections on your report. You, like this, you just keep your product as simple as possible uh, and then you, ju you just put them into some subsections. Yeah, that, that's right. It, ma it, it, it makes the flow I won't say easier, but it gives you the opportunity to not use too much feature in the system mm -hmm. and separate the documents more properly regarding your business. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm trying to buy some rice, I will put that in the sport package option one. That's for the price of, yeah, it's really expensive rice. Gold rice. <laughs> Definitely not the Uncle Ben's. <laughs> uh, maybe we can put... I don't know, bananas? Yeah, some bananas. Banana milkshake. milkshake oh. Oh. Sorry, it's really cool. No, it's good. Okay. Banana milkshake, yeah, it's specific price. Subsections, package one, because it, you can think about that. Um, client has some options for each package uh, that he can take, and he just decided to to take a, a milkshake uh, with the banana flavor and uh, a, a rice, a, a box of rice. So, but he has another uh, sport package uh, and there will both some pasta maybe. Uh, we will put that in sport package too and he will... Uh, Buy it for 32. Yeah, and he wants also to add a new milkshake or but with the flavor uh, maybe strawberry or chocolate chocolate that's a good one for package two so as you can see <coughs> we have uh, here the, uh, the sections with representing the, the package itself so if I'm sitting it it doesn't change anything in the back end I know do so it's simply selling uh, basic products, but in the front end, I mean on the document that you will show to your client, it will be structured by kind of package. That's a work of one too. Yeah. To and for companies, whereas you can buy products, for example, for your office and then products to be, to be sold afterwards, it's also a good idea, continuously speaking, because you can separate the documents and sh show exactly what, are, what is the, the amount for mm -hmm. the, office, the office supplies and what is the amount to, for the product that, is, that, would need, that would be need to be sold afterwards. Exactly. So it makes it easier. So as you can see here, you have your sport package one with the rice and the milkshake banana, and package two with pasta and chocolate, f chocolate flavor. Um, but of course, if this option doesn't fit you because you specifically want to have only one um, product line in your order, you can use the option of kit. Um, for that, we have to make some configuration in the manufacturing module. That's right. 
you need the manufacturing module. It's mandatory to use the kit. It's, it's basically... Uh, it's because of the build on materials. Yeah, it's based on that. Um, Which is one of the features that is only available in the manufacturing application in O2. Mm -hmm, exactly. So maybe to take back our example, we can set a uh, Spoke package one, of which course. is composed by uh, banana milkshake and rice. So if we, uh, I'm in the manufacturing module here, and on the option master beta, we have here the bill of materials. So it's gonna be like a bill of materials, but um, with the, the feature kit. So uh, it won't work exactly as the bill of materials. Um, you won't have any manufacturing order linked to uh, when you will uh, sell uh, yeah, these kits. It's just for um, the, the sale order and the delivery. Um, yeah, to change how I applied them. That's right. It's exactly this. So let's create a new, a new one, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. What to create? Uh, maybe we can create for package one. Sport. Number one. And there put some product so we can add the the rice. Rice package and and say say for this package maybe we can have we need two quantities. Yeah. Two packs of rices. We won't add any other information and then we can choose for example the milkshake, the banana one, milk. Yeah. First one the banana. And here, for this package, you offer five banana, yep. bananas milkshakes. We can do that. Okay, so we're good here. And now, um, the most important thing, if you want to use the kit, is this option, bomb type. We have to choose the second one, kit. Otherwise, it won't work as a kit, but as a, a bit of material and the classic uh, way to produce uh, a product. So... As you can see, we have put a little informational text. It gives you mm -hmm. some information regarding the kits. Either you have the finished products or the semi-finished products, and then you know exactly how it will work in the system. So in the difference on the document, I mean, maybe uh, wh what is applying when you sell uh, a product with kits? Uh, what is the, the consequence on, on the delivery order? Uh, do you see one line or all the component or is it working as a... For example, if, if it's a, f a finished product, mm -hmm. as you can see here, it will show all the lines of the mat uh, uh, was the of the real materials. Yeah. And then uh, for the semi-finished products, it's a little bit different. Uh, where is the component? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, on the sell order, you will see only the finished product. Yeah, yeah, so and yeah. On the delivery, you will have the, all, all, the all the products to be delivered. That's right. Okay. That's the idea. Yeah. You, so s you sell the you sell the finished products, but on the deliveries, mm -hmm. you see you see all the products that needs to be moved from one warehouse or location to another one, which could be internally or eventually a partner location, a vendor location, yeah, whatever it is. So in our case, uh, what we will see on the on the order uh, on the sale order is aligned with the product port number one. Yes, and on the delivery we will see rices and yeah. milkshakes. Okay. That's a good one. It doesn't seem like a lot of people are watching us. Um, yeah, or we'll maybe you don't have any questions. <coughs> Do not hesitate. Yeah, we will make a run just after this demo uh, on, on the chat to see all your questions. And you will, uh, uh, we will uh, answer it just, just in a few seconds. Um, so now, yeah, I'm selling this spoke number one. Oh, no, no, it's already here. It's a customer. <laughs> Michel to Fletcher. Fetch. Famous guy in Hodu. Yeah, he likes to, to, to do sports, so... He's a really good client. Um, okay, so, as we said, we have only one line for the product sport number one. And if we confirm the sale, we would be able to see on the debris order all the component, but not, of course, the spot number one. So if I'm going on the delivery, ah, uh, yeah, it's working perfectly. We have the rice and the milkshake banana, which 
at the end of uh, the product that you deliver, you don't deliver any product export number one. It's just a virtual uh, yeah, product necessary for the sale, but not for the delivery. Very good idea. For example, you are um, at the head of a sport club and you want to sell to new members a kit with a, a jersey, a short, mm -hmm. socks, all in one package. So yeah. that you have package one, which will be equipment, outfit, and in the deliveries, you need to deliver three different articles. Yeah, products. exactly. It's a good example. Uh, maybe the most famous is IKEA and all the kits. I yeah, <laughs> IKEA, that's right. IKEA, and there, yeah, it's working with <laughs> kits. But sports is a good one. Um, okay, maybe we can... There was a two different capabilities, <coughs> sorry, of the, of the kits. Yeah. It really depends on the on the business you do. You either have the choice to, to select sections which we like as well. Mm -hmm. And how? Let's check for some, some question questions about the chat. So um, we have here. Hello, hello, Pinit. Um, hello, Hamin. Hello, Hamin. Th thank you. Thanks for the good comment. Very appreciated. So we have a question from Christian. Christian is asking, who can, how can I use Odoo for internal task management that is not attached to a customer or order? I'm thinking of things like the boss want to assign one of his employees to clean we're gonna the do company a, car. We're going to do an inception of ourselves. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. That's inception. <laughs> I don't know why we don't have the chatter here on the other screen. Oh, well, yeah. Um, but we will check the question directly here on the YouTube page. Um, okay, so the question was, oh, I'm thinking of things like the boss want to assign one of his employees to clean the car company. So the task management, yeah, that's uh, more link, I guess, to the project management. Uh, I, I would project say project, management. yes. And there you can, we can have an eye, have a look at the, the project itself, how it's working. Um, I don't know if your question, Christian, is about creating a task when you sell something to a client or just handling tasks to your employees. Um, we'll take the case of assigning tasks and creating tasks uh, from scratch to and assign them to, to, to employees. Uh, but there is also the possibility to directly create a task linked to a sale order. That's right. Every order line could create automatically a task in an existing project or create a new project from the, that order line if yeah. needed. Exactly. So let's take this example here. We don't need any sales order because it's just about task management within mm -hmm. the company. Yeah. So you see that here for a moment we have already a, a couple of projects existing in the system. Let's say we will create a new one and say car cleaning. As usual, we like to have alias in the system for project, for example, big building projects mm -hmm. for people who need to send emails, pictures, documents attached to one specific project. So you can create an, ali an alias. Here, obviously, will be the URL of our test database, which is not very accurate. But for you, for example, if it's, I don't know, odoo.com, it will be cleaning at odoo.com if you need to send yeah. pictures to the people so that you know exactly if the car are messy, good, or not for the moment. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that is to create a task in a project. That's right. Um, here, let's say we will allow timesheets, so you know that your employee, all, all, all along will take an employee to clean a car. And let's say we will create and edit the project. Mm -hmm. As you can see, for the moment, it's all about just a box showing that it's a car cleaning. The project manager it is the administrator, and the privacy is here set to visible to all employees because it's an internal project. Mm -hmm. We won't set any, custo uh, any customer, and we won't ask for rating. No, because it's not very not needed necessary. here. Um, as maybe a big change between V10 and V11 is that you, they, there is no more issues, uh, possibility to use issues in the in the project uh, module. Um, thing is, issues are changed by task directly. So you will handle directly task instead of issues. Uh, so the option issue is not available anymore in the project module, but uh, that is not really a big, uh, a big problem because issues of task, at the end, it's almost the same thing. 
Uh, as you can see also on a lot of models, we like to have the active and archive button. For example, if the, the car cleaning only happens once a year and you don't want it to be shown in the dashboard here every time, mm -hmm. you can, of course, Opening, uh, it opens directly the stages. I just want to enter the. Into what? Here, it's oh, time okay. sheets. But uh, I just wanted to, to go to the settings here and say that, for example, if you want to archive it, it will archive all the tasks and issues mm -hmm. if you want to put the, the project on site for a moment or eventually you don't want to delete it because you have impor uh, imp very important information and you just want to put it on the side. Yeah. We can do that as well. So as Maxim has explained before, we don't have the issues anymore. Here it's all about the tasks. And by clicking on tasks, you see that now it's the same idea as the CRM. Mm -hmm. You have a pipeline. Whereas you can say, for example, here the task is new. Oh yeah, so you are building the, the Kanban view with different stages? That's right, okay. that's right. The idea is, for example, here to follow up a project regarding different task and deadlines that you want to set mm -hmm. in the company. Yeah, yeah. So let's say we have different stages here. It's new, assigned, cleaning, done? Uh, uh, feedback. Oh, yeah. To see the car is very, very well done. Yeah, there are still and some done. fleeing on my car. <laughs> <laughs> You're not happy? <laughs> and say, for example, I'll create a new type, uh, a new type of car, of a uh, task. Let's say I want to clean Pascal's car, messy guy. And here you have obviously the task to yeah. be done. Enter it. The pipe is as, as usual on the top right side of the box. You can, of course, click on every stage to move the task from one stage to another mm -hmm. and to see it on the pipeline. Like we have explained at the beginning of the um, of the live support, we have now the new activity, that the, the new activity feature that works, of course, on the project as well, and that will show here, mm -hmm. like we have explained, uh, a little that will give you a little notifications for the specific project. Yeah. And it's quite easy. You have here a description, and let's say I want to, I wanted to do uh, clean the the glass, clean the. the Inside and outside, yeah, and outside Oops. cleaning, and then a little polish. And the deadline is to be set by the end of the month mm -hmm. for the third year. Let's say, for example, here it's an urgent feature, very important. Yeah. We, we need to do it quick. It's a red, uh, no, this one is. This one is better. It's okay. urgent. Okay. Save it. And here, it's quite easy. Just a task showing up what you need to do. You can also make it as favorite. Mm -hmm. And here in the timesheets, you can edit the planned hours and say, for example, it will take an hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Um, just uh, to get back to the question of Christian, if you want to assign some... Uh, a precise employee, you can here choose in the field assigned to uh, the specific employees. By default, it will be the, the one creating the task. But here, you can change it here. Yeah. So that's how you can um, give a task to uh, a dedicated employee. And um, it will be normally one if you send an email uh, directly on the chat, uh, or you can just back get back on, on his own uh, session or the session, uh, go into the project and you will see all the tasks uh, uh, for which he is uh, assigned to. So, um, as you can see as well, you you have here the tags, mm -hmm. and we can also do a, a new thing on the views is add, adding colors on the task yeah. to show up exactly what is requested or for example sometimes yes the uh, assignation can be done by colors you can say that this if you have five, for example five employees you say that nicholas is the green one and maxim is the yellow one and mm -hmm. it, they will know that 
all the green ones are for Nicholas and the yellow ones are for Maxim. It's another idea um, how to assign it. Yeah. For example, in this case, the administrator could stay the, the, the admin or the, the boss could always be assigned to the task so he, he can follow what happens. And you can also add new followers here that could be the employee of the, the company. Different ideas, different way to manage mm -hmm. the assignation and the way of working in the system. Yeah, exactly. And you can... Let's say this one is assigned now. Mm -hmm. Friends Pierce. There is no automatic move from one stage to another. That's that's not a, in the standard of Odoo. Um, and now, for example, it's assigned. And let's say I'll move one step further. It's in cleaning. You will start cleaning and you record your time. That's right. For example, first phase is done on, on the 19th, and it's not the employee, Peter Parker, but... It's, uh, yeah, um, Francis Pierce. Oh, because maybe it's not, uh, there is no employee linked to Fran um, Francis Pierce in, the, in, the, in this database, but normally... Normal, normally, when, we, when you create a user, um, an employee is created as well in the mm -hmm. system. Here it's not the case, because it's a, a test database. But let's take another one. Let's not take France, but let's take uh, Peter Parker or Ashley Presley. Yeah. Let's take Ashley Presley. And take also. Okay, but that's because the, the user are not corresponding to the name of the employees. So uh, that's why there is a gap between the name of the employee and uh, the user. Here assigned to, uh, it has to be a user, and the employee, you can create an employee, but you can link, of course, your employee to the user. Uh, in this case, there is a gap between the name, it's not the same on the employee uh, form, and the, the related user has a, another name, that's why. It's, a, it's, a, it's all about the test database, whereas, uh, as, as we said, a lot of people are testing things, it changes every second. So it doesn't matter, we can keep going and take let's, the record let's, the time. Let's say... So she, this she guy is pretty fast. This guy worked 40 minutes. <laughs> First phase. It, that was the... Sorry, that was the outside cleaning. Okay. Pro so progress bar has moved. Remaining hours as well uh, has changed. So we can see that we have uh, 15 minutes left uh, to just accomplish the whole task based on the initial 10 hours and yeah the customer email that's more if you want to uh, involve your clients in the process of the task yeah and that's also when you when you do a task creation from a sales order mm -hmm. the customer shows up here yeah also so yeah let's let's do another uh, another line maybe Move it to let's let's do the the, the outside cleaning, or maybe it's it has been done faster, which is good. Yeah, so you can wait for some feedbacks, and the guy is. Uh, and here we we can, for example, plan an activity. Screen activity. And yeah. say it's a to do. Yeah. And we can ask ask uh, admin if car is. Yeah. So you know that you have a, an action to do, an activity. Um, as you can see here, uh, the module um, project has been shown up. Uh, shown up. I and mean, you can see that it's linked to a specific task, and you have uh, an activity in the future. So if I'm going directly from this uh, icon, I can access to the to the task itself. And yeah, I have an activity planned in five days. Uh, of course, I can still edit it, or once it will be done, I can mark it down, give uh, write a feedback like car was really clean. Perfect. Yeah. So you can down and schedule the next one, or you can just down the process. The done and schedule the next one is very, very, um, very cool when you do emails, for example. Yeah. You've done one email, you know that you expect another one from the client, you can schedule another other activity, mm -hmm. you say that where the, the, the answer, I don't have it yet, Yeah. what happens? Yeah, exactly. And when it's done, you can just put it in the done stage. 
Um, I'll, I would say that's how we can handle uh, task, uh, specific task to employee um, to get back to the that question, could, uh, questions. Yeah. That could be a very good way to handle task management within the system. Oh. Okay, so let's just have a look. That was a task management. How would you go about entering, opening uh, balances for debtors and creditors? Okay. Um, that's totally different topics. We can just move. So Terenas uh, has a question about how can we create our opening balance? Um, yeah, for debtors and creditors. So that's linked to the accounting module. And there you have the possibility to just create a new accounting entry. Uh, in this accounting entry, you will specify each customer, uh, supplier, and the, the, for example, the client account uh, or the specific client account, if you, if you work with specific client account, and the debit or the credit uh, that is linked to, uh, to this client. Exactly. Uh, a, a big change we have, that we have done in the, in the V11 as well is here, the configuration steps that are shown up Mm -hmm. uh, on the top of the accounting app that wasn't that wasn't available in the v10 and as you can see by clicking on for example the first one the company data it will open the page with the company data whereas you can enter uh, for example the vat number which is called thin in english yeah information about the currency activate eventually more currencies if you want to work in a multi-currency environment yeah that's right also bank accounts where you can record the data's manually import a document or eventually do a bank synchronization, which depends on the country where you're working. Mm -hmm. Same for the fiscal year, chart of accounts, that you, you can a little bit adapt regarding your needs. And a new feature, which is here, the initial balances for the system. You have to know that in V11, we, if you work in V11 for a couple of years, you don't need to do opening and closing entries. Uh, the system does it automatically by the reports. The reports calculate the, the, the data from the, the existing ones in the system, so you don't need to do mm -hmm. new openings exactly. and closing entries. But when you start with the V, when you start with Odoo, you need to do it one first time here by doing an opening in the miscellaneous operation journal. Yeah, that's exactly the same uh, thing. To, if we go from this uh, this bar uh, this bar chart um, directly on the initial balances, it's the same thing as creating a new opening a, a new accounting entries from the advisor menu. So you access to the same thing but from different uh, places. So like my, le, as With Maxim said, choose for example an account for the tax paid. It's purely example. Choose a partner if you want to put a partner. Eventually a label. Mm -hmm and the debit or credits regarding the, what you have in the system. Yeah. Add items and keep on doing it like this. When it's done. You can post it and it will uh, record your entries in your accounting. So that's the way to make uh, opening balances and specifically if you want to, to answer to the question, uh, specifically for debtors and creditors, um, you have only to specify the the account, the client's account or the supplier accounts, and um, the the name of the partner. So, That's right. so we we reach pretty, this pretty good uh, feature form directly here, but we can also do that manually uh, from the journal uh, entries. Create a new one, and by default, it's always the miscellaneous uh, operation journal. Um, but if you want to create a journal for opening entries, you can just first create the journal and then select it in the in the journal entries. So that, that was the case in V8, I think. You had like opening entries journals. Yeah, and also in V8, you had some periods uh, That's right. and yearly periods that you had to pre-configure before to create a, a new balance. Now uh, it has changed. It's all about the financial reports mm -hmm. that are calculated regarding the filters that you have on the top of the yeah. of the report. So here, take the uh, client. Okay. Uh, it's a receivable maybe, uh, but it's not a Belgium, it's like a US. 
So it's payable and receivable. Uh, let me see. It's payable and receivable, and then you can choose your partner and put some debit credits. Uh, then once it, one is done, you can post it, and it will record the the line into your accounting. Um, the difference between unposted and posted: one, it's post. All your reports are taken into account those uh, accounting entries that you just posted. So until it's not post, uh, you won't see them on the reports. But by default? By default. But you have some options where you can choose also including unpost entries. That's right. Uh, I hope it's answering to your question, um, Terenas. So we have another question. Shashi, Shashi Shekbar. Uh, can you please show the intercompany sales and purchase management? Like if I have set up my Odoo to multi company, if company A is selling product to company B. Okay, um, so first of all, you have to set up some companies, different companies, okay. such as company A, company B. Then we will uh, have the possibility to create the Intercompany rule. Actually, maybe here. Not sure I will be able to change it, but. Uh. Yeah. Oh. And there you have the a tab uh, specific for the intercompany rules. Um, maybe we have to first check an option in the general settings to to just mention that we are working with Mil it. yeah um, intercompany rules. Um, maybe there is mm. no, that's not this one. Or I think it's ah, okay. It has changed in V11 uh, because before we if you we needed to check it right. That's a, no, a new. Uh, this one okay here um, automated intercompany transactions send sale or, uh, sales and purchase order uh, send invoice and credit notes yeah um, we have still to tick this one for me to, to have a multi-company working as you can see uh, for now we have um, this option is not uh, ticked and we don't have any possibility to switch from a company to another um, because there is no uh, specific thing here in the, in the menu bar uh, to choose the company in which we want to be logged. So if I'm taking this one and save it. I think we have to refresh the page. Not sure about that. Uh, maybe. I think so. Normally, one, uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we would have to refresh. Um, but then, once it's done, uh, you can see, as we just saw on the company uh, settings, we have a specific tab for intercompany mode, and there you can configure um, the move that you want to do inter the, uh, the companies. So, between the companies, so if you, for example, uh, company A is selling to company B, it means that company B is purchasing to a company A. So once you create uh, a sell order for company A and the client is company B, it will automatically create it, uh, create an, um, a purchase order in company B with supplier company A. So that's how we can do that. And uh, as Maxime has said, yeah, that's, uh, for the moment we, also we have nothing on the top bar mm -hmm. here. So we will take the user and say that we allow all the companies, mm -hmm. we have two companies here, save it, still doesn't show up, refresh the page. So what you did is allow the user to access to... To both of the companies. Okay. You have to know also that if you, have in, if you are in company B or company A, depending on the settings that you have entered in the general settings, it's still loading, we can have here... We can have here common contact books or common catalog, product catalogs. Check it or uncheck it, and it will give you the possibility, the capability to see mm -hmm. one of the products depending on the company. 
So it shares the product and clients? Of Here in this contacts? case, yes. yes. Okay. Cool. So you can use it in one company or the other. Okay. Good. I will change it, go back to company A, and now we can try, for example, to do a sales order for uh, the other company. Uh, yeah, we will f first maybe check the, the settings. The, yeah, the, comp the inter company rules. So let's take company and go into the inter company rules. So here you have four possibilities. Um, creates an order when buying to this company. So it means that each time that you uh, buy to company A, uh, it will create a sale order uh, in company A, of course. So if B is buying to um, to company A, it creates a sale order. Exactly. Same for the purchases. Same for the credit invoice. Uh, uh, sorry, invoice and credit notes. Yeah, and so you have also the possibility to, um, because of course the, the first two um, possibilities are just to create an RFQ or a quotation, but you can take this option and put it directly those. Uh, our current quotation confirming uh, it is it has uh, automatically it confirmed. confirmed. Yeah, exactly. That's that's obviously the case in many companies where you know exactly what you do in mm -hmm. within both of the companies, and you just want to move the products from one warehouse to another. You just need a document, uh, legally speaking. So you do that. Yeah. You validate it. Everything is done. Register the payment, and you're good. Exactly. And so, as Nicolas said, uh, we have the last, op the last option, which is create invoice uh, credit note when you encode the uh, invoice or credit note. So it's always to work like a uh, mirror, and uh, once you've done something on the on co one company, it will do the uh, opposite things, or same thing in the company B, depending, of course, on, on the topics. Um, Okay, we can maybe use this one, um, create a sale order when you buy to this company, so... <coughs> Let me check both of those, no? Oh yeah, we can check both of them. We, don't, we, don't, we will not check the auto-validation to show you how it, how it is. <laughs> and... Um, uh, yeah, first one was the one. Uh, my company, Chicago. Maybe, maybe o o open <laughs> it to be sure. Company A, yeah, ah. company A, that's good. Okay. Let's do maybe the, the same thing for uh, the second company. <coughs> I think. Oh, we can, we can, so we can just make some, uh, one example. Uh, let's make a buy in company B. So we. We make a purchase in company B, and the supplier is company A. That's right. A, and it should create um, a sale order in company A. Exactly. Client uh, company B. So let's change company. Yeah. I don't understand really why we don't have the. Whichever. No idea. Um, okay, so now we are logged into company B. We can go to. Um, we can create a purchase order for company A. Uh, let's say we will buy ice cream uh, for nine hundred bucks. Gold ice cream. <laughs> it's Willy Wonka. Best ice cream in the world. Um, okay, so now I'm confirming the order. And wait, 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 can you show the order? Yep. You must have the vendor location for this. Oh, okay. You have to enter the company A. The thing is here, the configuration are not done properly. Uh -huh. As we said before, it's a test database. Um, but if you go in... Uh, should, yeah, that's meaning that we are under company B. Okay, so... We don't have any inventory. Oh, it's maybe because uh, we don't have a location, we don't have multi-locations. So maybe, 
think by default it takes the locations vendor uh, customers at the general one. And we may need to ah, configure okay. multi multiple locations, so we have to create a location, a specific location for the company A. On the in the interface. Uh, but normally, okay. Okay, so where is this? My company is Chicago. Let's just company up here. Uh, receive goods. When the federal purchase to respect this way around. Whoever's will be my uh, Ah, okay. Or ah, yeah, yeah, that's the wearer that we should. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can remove it. Um, I think if you go in inventory. Yeah. Okay. Configuration, I think. Yeah. Multiple warehouse with multiple locations, maybe? Yep. Um, okay, we don't need the location back for the package. Multi warehouse. Yeah, let's say, let, let's take this one. Let's put the full options. Full package. Um, but yes, normally it, it, it should work. Uh, it should work because uh, I've already done that lots of times, but uh, it's possible that the, the configuration are not really uh, properly done. So there is a micmac between the... Yeah, and by default, the system always uses the, the, the customer's location, which is a, a generic one in the system. Mm -hmm. It's not set as an inter internal location. It's really like when creating multiple locations, one is by default, yeah. uh, the, the customer's one, and by checking on the, par on the partner form is a customer, the system takes the location by default. Yeah. Here it's not the case because it's one of the company that we use within the system. Okay, so just let's take a last uh, try. Maybe let's let's quickly check the company A, or yes, just um, okay, can you maybe check just the form? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe let's let's maybe yeah try try it again. Um. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, vendor reference, okay. Must sell a vendor location for this partner company A. Normally, we should have been able to put the vendor location. Um, okay. Okay, it's just a matter of uh, of configuration, but no worry, it's working. Um, normally, we should access to uh, the vendor location uh, for for this one. Um, I don't know why it's not showing here, um, but that's the magic uh, thing uh, with the Rembot. Um But trying to, to look after uh, some uh, some clue. Yeah. Okay, but that's the way to do that. So you have to configure like the, the internal uh, the intercompany rules, and uh, it will make the the move the proper move between each companies. Um, okay, but we can. Yes, we can we can check the a new question. Um, okay, so sale order of company A should be the purchase order of company B. So Shashi uh, Shekhar, we just show you how to do that um, specifically. But of course, um, if you start from scratch on your database. Uh, as the, the settings are properly done, uh, it will work. 
uh, in our case it's because we are using a brand but um so ethos ethos ss2 uh ss21 does that work for offline or do um honestly i don't know what is ethos uh ss2 the uh, ethos ss2 is the, the customer over here but he has yes ah, okay, okay sorry <laughs> i think i'm not sure about your question ethos maybe you can precise it in the system uh, yeah, sorry in the in the chatter i think you wanted to use the email marketing with the leads and um and opportunities for the moments as you may know you can use in the crm you have the email alias mm -hmm. uh, which you can link to your website or eventually just to give the email address to the customers to send new s leads in the system yep. by using for example info at odoo.com it's pure example uh, the, the, the 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 lead would show up here mm -hmm. in the pipeline exactly it's not for the moment linked to the email marketing i think it's a very good very good question i don't think it's it's possible because email marketing honestly i don't know but what you can do it's a mass mailing a mass mail and in your uh, template you can put maybe if you want uh, you can say uh, to to the to in this email or you can write if you uh, want to be uh, contacted by us uh, just send me an email by this uh, on this uh, alias, on this uh, email address. So if they they send something to the alias, it will create a lead in your um, CRM. That's a way to to work. Um, honestly, I have no really good idea about email marketing, but we we can have an eye on it. Um, to see if we can have something like this. Um, yeah, I think the best way. Let me check the settings just a second. I'm pretty sure it won't be possible because mm -hmm. e email marketing is the idea is more to regroup to regroup specific customers to send information by email and the idea to create automatically a lead may be a little bit too just say it, it will maybe pollute your database because mm -hmm. if you send for example 500 emails you won't you do not want to have 500 leads showing up in the database uh, it's 500 boxes that you need to clean, check if, if they are really yeah. interested in it. The idea of, of having, for example, a contact form or uh, an email alias is more accurate, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. the email, but we, we, don't, we don't want to, uh, to mix both of the application, I think. Um, we can maybe discuss that a little bit later, but the idea we, here is between the email marketing and the CRM is really to separate the, the, two, the two models. Yep. One is to inform, the other one is really to get in contact and begin with the eventual sales, quotation, and doing business with a specific customer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but of course you can, you can uh, just put a link, uh, a redirection, you uh, are redirection to a form on your website. The client, the prospect can just, it's not still a prospect, but you can um, just fill all the form, submit it, and it will create a lead in your, in your, yeah, in your CRM, yeah, that, as Nicholas said. That's a very good idea, or eventually puts here in the text, under it, for example, if you want more information, don't hesitate to send us an email to yeah, this email address, that's another way and to it do creates that. a lead, mm -hmm. so that you know that the people that send an email are people that want really to have information. Maybe for, for those who does not know anything about website and website form, um, there is a feature in the website which is creating form and with the form you can create a new object in a, a new record in a specific object so if we take the example of leads this here. there is a possibility to create um, a lead directly when a form is submitted um, where the form again Normally, a uh, contact form, yeah. So if you it's on the website, uh, yeah. Uh, let you have to. Oh no, so, uh, yeah. Can you have to, you have to. I think you have to install the module, which is called uh, website form. Install it, and then it show, it shows maybe here. That's possible. Yes. Yeah, you uh, have, that's that's a, a little free module that you need to to install.
probably, pro probably sure it's already installed here. Yeah, you see that here on the left. Contact form, and I think... Oh, okay, there is a proper mode, okay. And then I think you have, we have to be in the developer mode to be able to see it in the website menus. But it's it's quite easy. Every mo every form that you create has a specific email alias. Mm -hmm. Either it can, it can be a project, it can be a CRM opportunity. Whatever you want to, to implement in the system. Mm. Are, you, are we in developer mode? have a nice or... Oh, maybe it's our, I think, oh yeah, yeah, okay, it's, it's directly on the website, yeah. you can, uh, so if I'm going maybe on the contact us page, it doesn't matter, here is, for example, a contact us page, it's a kind of form which will create um, a net desk ticket in your, in your backend, uh, but you can also, of course, edit and use the option uh, form who should be here form builder and I can in the new page for example create a new form and there you can choose what is um, the thing that you want to create uh, yeah it's a restricted list you can not choose all the parameters but you can create a lead a sell order create a task create a ticket uh, send an email create customer or apply for a job in the HR module. Um, so for the lead, we can save. And as you can see, I can... We can try it, for example. Uh, yeah, well, but you can also add new ex an existing field from... Uh, suppose from that you level. have yeah uh, some custom more fields or you want to reuse a field that is existing in the model of the leads, you can add an, eg an existing field of the model and choose among all the available fields. It would be very useful if you have, if you had, for example, in your business you need to create new field with Studio. Yeah. You, can, you could add, add those fields uh, in the form. Exactly. So that exactly afterwards you know that uh, those are the information you expect from the customers to be shown on mm -hmm. the opportunities. And afterwards you see exactly which are the customer interested in doing business with you. And uh, if you want to create a new field from scratch directly on the website uh, editor option, you can just take the add custom field and uh, choose the kind of field, the, the kind of field uh, that you want to create. It will create this field also in the model and it will uh, record uh, yeah, the value that you enter in, those, in this field in the record of your, of your model. Here again, it's one of the cool features of Odoo. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. But as we, we often say to uh, our customers, because we, we work on projects, don't hesitate to duplicate the database, try it a couple of times, mm -hmm. see if it's, if it's good for you. And when it's the, the, the good setup for you, implement it in the final database, the production database, this is how we call it. Yeah. And then you'd be happy to use the, the form exactly regarding your needs. Okay. Um what do we have as mm -hmm. other questions? Um, I've created train login for 15 days, but it was locked in eight days. Uh, okay, that's something maybe, that's a good question, uh, Brunet. Um, you should probably, uh, probably send an email to our support uh, at odoo.com slash help. Um, because it's more administrative things um, than we uh, we are not able to answer you uh, on what happens on your on your DB, uh, but they will be able to uh, to give you a proper answer. So you can just send an email. Or it's a link odoo.com slash help. You can complete a form with your the problem descriptions, and they will uh, get back to you uh, as soon as they can. Yes. Yeah. It will, be, it will be easier for us as well, mm -hmm. as the live support and serves more business flows and small requirements here. The request is, needs more information from you, so do it on the support. Yeah, they have access to the to, to the content. our Odoo backend, uh, so they can check that uh, perfectly. Uh, okay, Clicks Media has a question. I'm facing a problem while you unreconcile and cancel 
a paid invoice because the balance of a journal like bank or crash does not move okay um we want to we want to enter into details for that because um accounting issues are really really case to case uh, so it's really difficult for us to um to be able to see 